I think a lot of people will be surprised to know that I'm like the funniest, silliest person ever. This is my breath thing. How my breath. Ew. I don't live in a multi-million dollar house. Try not to make a mess. They'd be really surprised to know that I'm not always uptight. I'm very silly. I love to joke around. I love to play around. But I feel like I'm in a circus half the time, and <laughs> I'm the ringleader. When people attack me on Instagram and stuff, I get like that, and I get emotional when I talk about it, because I'm like, yo, you don't understand what I deal with every day. So normally in the morning, I get woken up by Iceland around maybe three, four o'clock. She's crying, she wants to be in my bed with me. We're a team and that's pretty much what my morning's based on, trying to be unified. Oh, you're heavy, girl. Coming back from Miami, straight off of a business trip, out there shooting videos, radio interviews, hosting clubs, and then having to come back and transition into being a sister slash aunt slash single mother slash provider of this household. It's not easy on a day-to-day -day basis. So the thing with pancakes in my house is that Elias and Iceland are addicted to pancakes. Hey, where's my food? I'm getting it, relax. I want pancakes. My sister Victoria handles the pancake department way better than I do. Let me do it, because you don't know how to do this. I'll look pretty, I'll pay the bills, you cook the pancakes. <laughs> Iceland and Elias always eat together. They take baths together, they get dressed together, they do everything together. The reason behind that is growing up, when my mom actually fell into her addiction, my sister and I were taken from my mom and we were separated. Me and my sister both agreed that we want to raise them as together as possible because we didn't have that. Victoria was 16 when I got temporary custody of her. We both understand that we don't want Ison and Elias to grow up the way we did in you know, not having as much love as we should have or as much attention as we should have. So I don't know what sibling in the world would not want to see their sister or brother prevailing and living out their dreams. The difference between Mariah and Mariah Lynn is that Mariah is the girl who wakes up with stinky breath in the morning. She has wiggle all over her head. Like, she's just a normal human being. She's just herself. And Mariah Lynn is the perception that people have of her. Like, she's a celebrity, you know, she's Hollywood, she's bougie, she's this, she's that. That's just their perception of me. I'm so exhausted half the time that I just fall asleep and wake up looking like Cruella DeVille. A lot of the times, there's no time to even <laughs> stop and go get my hair done. Like, I'm literally ready to smash my head against a brick wall half the time because I have my sister calling me, the kids are screaming, They're, they don't want to go to bed. Mind you, I'm in the studio, I'm trying to record a record, and then I have a show in a week that I have to rehearse for, and it's like, it's a lot. So today I'm rushing out the house, which is the usual for me. My sister's gonna take over a few of my responsibilities that would have been mine, because not only do I have studio today, but I have rehearsal. No, I gotta sing. Iceland is opulent. She loves to sing. Oh, McDonald's Iceland's favorite song is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> twinkle Twinkle, and it's so funny because actually I had a moment on Love and Hip Hop where I kind of lost my cool. How I wonder what you are. Half of these one-liners from reality TV come from Iceland and Elias. Iceland's never seen my twinkle twinkle moment from the show, but I'm pretty sure when she gets older, she's gonna gag. Love you, bye. I grew up in Jersey City and Newark, New Jersey. My dad and my mom are originally from Jersey City. My stepdad is from Newark, so after my dad got married and him and my mom separated. My mom met my sister's father 
and we kind of relocated to North. You're not gonna have to take the responsibility. Why wouldn't I? It would have to be my responsibility. Okay. That means it's time for me to grow the f up, stop f up, stop you doing what even, I'm doing. You can't I'm even trying. Not get arrested. I think for my mom, being a young mother, going through her own traumatic experiences in her life definitely affected her being a good mom or she was a good mom, just not living up to the expectation of what a mother should be, especially a new mother. My family really helped my mom a lot with me. Most of the time, like I said, I was with my aunt or I was with my grandma. You know, my mom did do three years in a state prison in New Jersey, so that was three years that she wasn't there. Like, if I didn't go up with you, you probably would have went to jail today. This is the consequences of me. Oh. I was pretty young when my mom was incarcerated. She had gotten into an altercation. She had an unlawful weapon charge. When you're young, you don't, you know, you're innocent, so you don't know that your mom is using, or you don't know, you know, what's really going on. There's a lot of things that you don't know that I want to tell you that is far more worse than this. What like, could be I worse than drop this? this Me and my mom talk about it a lot now and she's apologized for the way she treated me. I know that you can do better. <laughs> All right? I you to apologize. I'm here. I love you. My first relationship was with a girl. I was with her for three and a half years, and she was more street smart, I would say, than I was, and she kind of was the one who kind of, like, you know, put it on me a little bit, like, hey, like, babe, I think your mom might be, you know, doing these things and you don't know about it. My mom went through my diary. I was really angry at her for disappointing me, so she kind of got physical with me and I went to school the next day kind of with a mark on my face and they asked me where did I get the mark and I was so mad that I told them my mom did it and the next thing I know they were taking me and my sister out of school, separating us. My relationship with my mom right now is, it's like a seesaw. And I know that sounds really weird, but you know, I'm her daughter and at times I feel like I'm her mother. I can't keep beating myself up for my mother being a drug addict. I can't keep beating myself up for my mother not being a mother. The biggest thing for me was learning how to forgive her. Even though I'll never forget the things that my mom put me through, I'm grateful for them because it really did, in a weird way, make me a better person. Yo. Yo, what up, we? Uh, I'm on my way to the studio. Let me ask you All right, bro, love you. I'll see you there. Okay, so All right. In a okay, bet. Bye. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Boy, if you want to know how to face, yeah. then you got to put this in the right. Boy, if you want to know how to face, yeah. then, then you got to have to put this in the right. It's right here to the left. Name hey, meet me at the studio. We can make some hits today. When I'm Mariah Lynn and I get on that stage, it's a whole different energy. Rehearsal is a big thing because a lot of people think they can get on stage and just wing it. You cannot wing it. Especially me, I'm not the best dancer out of the bunch. Like, I can twerk, I can cook, I can do all of that. But when it comes to hitting that one, two, three, four, five, six, I definitely need to rehearse. We're gonna put it one more. One more time. If you want to know how to this is. I don't think I did so well being it was the first day. I was kind of looking like a stiff ironing board. I'm not the best dancer. I can write a fire verse, but when it comes to dancing, I kind of leave that to the dancers. I loved it, and I can't wait to show everybody what the performance actually looks like on a big stage. Oh my God, it's so hot. We gonna take a little break. Let's do it. I was in a lot of trouble before I found music. I always loved music, I always loved to write. I've been writing poetry since I was like nine years old about, you know, all the stuff I've been through. I'm so happy with getting on stage and performing for people. Thousands of people singing my lyrics. It almost makes me wanna cry because 
I never thought that people would ever look at me that way. Like, I never thought that people would chant my lyrics or buy tickets to my show to see me. And it's like, all of these dreams are coming true, and it's because I transitioned from Mariah, the girl who was angry and upset, to Mariah Lynn, the girl who's just living her dreams and is just so grateful to be able to provide for her family a better life. And I just want young girls like myself who've been in foster care, who've gone through really traumatic experiences, to know that you can go from being your regular self to being whoever you want to be in life. Mariah Lynn is the person who I'm proud to be. What's good? So after rehearsal, since my rehearsal room is literally right next door to my studio, I try to base everything as in-house as possible because again, I don't really have too much time during the day. Let's get into it because we limited for time before the sun go down. Let's go. I got in the booth and I killed it. This is the year for me to prevail and I feel it. This is really, really lit. I'm literally the boss when it comes to my music because I've been so blindsided in the past and I've let people manipulate me and take advantage and take things that were supposed to be mine. Tiptoe is produced by YS on the beat and engineered by Mixed by Chameleon. So I feel like a lot of people tend to sleep on me and think that my music is not up to their liking or whatever. So tiptoe meaning like, you know, I'm kind of just getting to the money quietly and nobody sees me getting to the money so they think I'm not getting to the money. But in real life, I'm getting to the bag. He throwing cash while I dance. All right, I messed up, but I think we got a good one. Oh my God, yes. How are you? That was crazy. Thank you, bro. You out there? Yeah, I gotta get See going. I gotta get back to the kids and my sister. So after the studio, I'm literally so exhausted. Like I'm always in the studio until I can't keep my eyes open anymore. So I got home and everybody was sleeping. <laughs> which was the best thing in the world because then I get to lay on my couch and transition into Mariah again. Definitely today was a successful day. It's never an easy day, but it was a successful day. I just wanna secure my future. I just wanna prep for my family and how to, again, break the cycle and kind of have Victoria be good and Elias be good and see them go through college and see them be successful as well in life. What up? It's your boy Peter Guns. Subscribe to VH1's YouTube channel so you will never miss an episode.